We're going to look at interpreting the shape of a distribution and how that can affect uh, other things such as measures of the center. Here is a histogram and a stem plot. Over the top of it, I'm going to draw the general pattern that I see. So I'm not going to account for every little bump on there, but just the general pattern. I'm going to kind of smooth it out. and I'm going to do the same thing over here. What I'm doing is drawing what's called a density curve. A density curve is assume that all of those little jaggedy points are just due to the fact that we kind of have a small sample size and that really in reality it's actually a much smoother continuous flow. A nice curve like this here. So if you want to get technical it would be as the amount of data you collect goes to infinity. Instead of 100 data points or 10 data points, infinite data points and your bin size gets really, really small, it would smooth out your histogram really nicely. So the real point here, though, is that a density curve can highlight the shape. So here we're going to take a look at, at skewness versus symmetry here of a distribution. In this first curve, it's fairly symmetrical. Not perfect, but for the most part pretty symmetrical, and there's a single peak in the middle. So it would be called symmetric and unimodal. Another term is normal. You might have heard something called a normal curve or follows the normal or Bell distribution. Uh, whenever you hear that it's referring to a single peak in the middle uh, and fairly symmetrical shape. This graph here you can see most of the data is pushed off to the right side. And even though the data is on the right we have a tail here. The tail is where we label our skew. So when we say that this graph is skewed, we're going to call it left skewed. So this is a unimodal graph because there's a single peak and it is skewed left because that's where the tail is. For years I wanted to call this right skewed, but it is not. Same idea here. Most of the data is on the left, but the tail is on the right. So we're going to take a look at the tail pointing right. Clearly it's not symmetrical, so it is skewed right. And again, single peak, so it's unimodal. Last graph here is if everything's kind of even all the way across, we call that constant. So symmetric, skewed left because the tail is left, skewed right because the tail is right. When we look at things like unimodal, that means there is one peak. Uni meaning one, like a unicycle. When there are two peaks, we call that bimodal, like a bicycle. And as you may have guessed, when there are three peaks, it is trimodal, like a tricycle. So, and that continues upwards. But typically, you're not going to see graphs that are more than trimodal. Last thing I want to look at here is those original graphs that we pointed out here when we drew the density curves. What kind of skew does a graph like this have? Well, it looks like most of the data is clumped up over on the right side, so the tail is on the left. It is skewed left, so we call this skewed left. This one here is tricky because it's sideways. So what I would do is rotate your paper or whatever you have that you're working with so that the lower numbers are on the left, the higher numbers are on the right, and then you can see that, just like the one before it, most of the data is over here, tails here. So this one is not quite as skewed, but I would say slightly skewed to the left. Last thing that we'll look at on these is what do you think happens to the mean and the median when numbers, when distributions like this are skewed? The median is always going to be the middle number no matter uh, where the data falls. So the middle number is always going to kind of be uh, on the cl side closest to where all the data is clumped up. So your median is going to be over on the data clumpy side. The mean is also going to be in the center, but the mean is going to get tugged a little bit farther towards the tail. The mean is going to get tugged a little bit farther towards the tail. And you might wonder, well, why, why would that happen? The reason is, is if this number here is really, really small, that number is going to drop the average quite a bit. 
But the median, since it's just the middle number, doesn't care how big or small the numbers on the end are. It just cares how many there are. So whether this number is 70 or this number is negative 4,000, the median won't change. But the mean will drop quite a bit if this was very negative. So that's why the mean will always go a little bit towards the tail. And I'm going to go ahead and just label that in real quick for you. Here we got this labeled the mean, the median, the mean, the median. When there is skew, the mean will always follow the tail. If it was skewed right, the mean would be farther to the right.